Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Mary from Mary's Kitchen MTL. I hope this video will inspire you to make your own sourdough bread. This recipe will give you two nice loaves with a golden crispy crust and a light and airy crumb. To make this bread, you will need a sourdough starter. Please see my sourdough starter video posted March 11th of this year for the step-by-step -step recipe and procedure. Please note that the ideal water and room temperature when making sourdough bread is between 75 and 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 and 28 degrees Celsius. For better results, the dough should be proofed in a draft-free place. Use filtered chlorine-free water. Here are the ingredients you will need to make the bread and this is the procedure. The night before making your bread, feed your mature starter. Take it out of the refrigerator and stir it. Using a digital scale, weigh and add 100 grams of the starter inside a clean jar. Place your mature starter back in the refrigerator for your next bake. Add 100 milliliters of filtered lukewarm water. Use a rubber spatula to mix. To this, add 100 grams of all-purpose flour. Stir the mixture well and scrape down the sides of the jar. Place a rubber band to mark the starter spot. Cover the jar loosely and let the starter ferment overnight at room temperature. The next morning, your starter will be nice and bubbly. Stir it and do a float test. Add a small amount to a glass of warm water. The starter should float. If it sinks, it is not strong enough to make your bread rise. You will have to repeat the feeding process. Weigh 200 grams of starter and set it aside. Weigh 700 milliliters of filtered lukewarm water. Make sure to test the water temperature. It should be between 75 and 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 and 28 degrees Celsius. From the 700 milliliters, transfer 40 milliliters or 3 tablespoons inside a small glass and set it aside. Now add the starter to 660 milliliters of water, mix it and set it aside. Weigh 1000 grams of bread flour inside your stand mixer bowl. Place the bowl on the stand, attach the dough hook, add the starter water and begin to mix. Mix the dough for 5 minutes until it comes together. Once the dough comes together, remove the hook and the bowl from the stand. The dough should be elastic and sticky. Use a rubber spatula to scrape down the sides of the bowl. Cover the dough with a kitchen towel and let it auto lease for one hour at room temperature. After one hour, dissolve 20 grams or one tablespoon of pink Himalayan salt in the 40 milliliters of reserved water. Pour this over the dough. Wet your hand and mix in the salt water by poking and squeezing the dough. Cover the dough and let it rest for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, grease a large bowl with 1 tablespoon or 15 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil and transfer the dough. You will perform 4 sets of 6 stretch and folds every 30 minutes during a period of 2 hours. Wet your fingers and grab the top portion of the dough, stretch it upward and over itself toward the center of the bowl. Rotate the bowl and repeat.
By the last round, you will notice that the dough is plump, smoother, stretchier, and less sticky. These sets are performed to strengthen the dough's gluten and develop elasticity. This technique improves the dough's texture and creates a light and airy crumb. After the fourth stretch and fold, cover the dough and let it bulk proof for four hours at room temperature. This is what the dough looks like after four hours. It has risen. The dough is relaxed, puffy, and jiggly. Prepare your bannetons. Sprinkle rice flour inside the baskets. Rice flour prevents the dough from sticking to the cloth. Set them aside for now. Next, sprinkle bread flour on your work surface and transfer the dough. Cut the dough in half and then flatten it a little with your fingertips to release some air. Fold one side and then fold the other over like a book. Press the dough a little so it sticks. Use a scraper to push the flour toward the dough so that when you grab it, it won't stick to your fingers. Grab the dough with both hands, pull it toward you and then fold it over itself a few times. At this point, you do not need flour so you will clear it off. Grab the dough with both hands, turn it and place it forward. Cup it with your hands and pull it toward you. This creates surface tension. Repeat this motion until you have a round tight ball of dough or a perfect boule. Grab the loaf with your scraper and place it upside down inside the banneton. Repeat the process for the second loaf. Dust the loaves with flour and then cover them with plastic. I'm using clean shower caps to cover my loaves. Cold proof the loaves overnight for 12 to 15 hours. The next morning, preheat your Dutch oven in the oven with the lid for 30 minutes at 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 232 degrees Celsius. While the oven is preheating, take one loaf out of the refrigerator. Sprinkle semolina flour on a piece of parchment paper. The semolina will prevent the bottom from browning too much. Flip the loaf onto the parchment paper. Sprinkle bread flour on top and score the loaf. Wear your oven gloves and take the Dutch oven out of the oven. Grab the parchment paper and transfer the loaf inside the hot Dutch oven. Cover and bake the loaf for 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, remove the lid and bake for another 25 minutes. Once the loaf has baked, grab the parchment paper and transfer the loaf onto a cooling rack. Cover the Dutch oven and place it back inside your oven while you score your second loaf. Repeat the process for the second loaf.
I can assure you that you will be very pleased with the results. Here are two beautiful loaves with a golden crispy crust. Tap the bottom of the loaf, it should sound hollow. This is a sign that the bread is well done. Here comes the most exciting part. As you can see, this loaf has a nice open crumb. An open crumb is evidence of healthy fermentation and dough strength. This crumb is light and airy, and this loaf has a very nice oven spring. This is the perfect sourdough bread, you will love it. I hope you like this recipe. I would love to hear your comments if you make this amazing bread. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more recipes. I'll see you next time.